Hello and welcome uh, to the Plo Newsroom, episode 9. Uh, today is Friday, August 5, 2020, obviously. And you're listening to Philipp Bauer from Munich. And Fred van Dijk from Rotterdam. Welcome. Welcome. So this is a podcast about Plone, uh, condom management and the world and the community around it, uh, written in Python by a loving community that we're talking a lot about. So we are available in video and audio uh, both. Uh, today we're going to show some uh, some add-ons and some demos from the yep. uh, very, very fresh beta one. So if you want to see that, uh, just... Grab the video from YouTube. Otherwise, you can just listen to the audio. We'll try to explain what you're actually going to see. But as you... We sometimes forget in our enthusiasm. Exactly. So uh, we, we have, have a small a website. website. Yes, we have uh, www.plum.org slash newsroom where you can find links to the add-ons and packages we discuss, uh, older episodes, and the links to the audio-only uh, version of the podcast. As you said, Philip, our, this is our summer edition, so it was a welcome because we didn't record a podcast for two months. Yeah, we just had to wait for the beta to drop. Uh, we, that's, remember that's a you, welcome excuse. We, no, we joked about that. I think the last one we said, okay, and now we're not going to take another podcast until beta one is around, and it arrived at the end of July. Yeah. And so, yeah. So, so this is the the summer edition. This is the, our our uh, taking a bit uh, uh, taking a bit of uh, relaxation, back off, a look at other things. And this is the summer edition for uh, June, July, August, and uh, next month we will be probably be back with a regular uh, September. And uh, Philip, September that will be. Yeah, I have season, to go on holidays two. after this episode. Yeah, to go so that will that will be uh, season two. Oh, this is our last. Really? This is our last episode of, of uh, season, season of, of finale. Season. This finale. is our season finale. Excellent. Yes, excellent. Yes. So, uh, yeah, be prepared for the big, big cliffhanger at the end of the episode. <laughs> this uh, is not a. This is not a com. This is not a <laughs> Games of Thrones. Please, Games of Thrones. <laughs> Games we had that joke. We had that joke already on T-shirt. So, yeah, summer edition. True. Uh, the main yeah. feature, of course, uh, we already spoiled it, is uh, Plone uh, uh, 6 Beta 1 has been released. We have uh, the regular uh, news about community news and events, but that's also a bit uh, uh, more relaxed. And uh, uh, But, of course, the conference is coming up, so we'll have to talk about that. Uh, a long wish of mine is we're going to try to talk a bit about marketing and sales, of which we're both a bit scared because it's, it's like this six-headed dragon uh, that would, could fill up a whole hour where we have no problem filling up an hour with blown news, but we shouldn't do that around uh, 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 only marketing and sales. And of course, we'll have uh, some add-ons in the end if I do my job as a time manager, timekeeper, uh, uh, as bad or as well as the last times. And Philip has prepared some nice uh, demos for that. So, yeah. Philip. So, yeah, we have uh, finally have a better one. So we had a Alpha 6 at the end of June instead of the uh, promised beta one uh, for multiple reasons. Uh, one important one was that Slate wasn't merged into Volto yet. Uh, it actually was a very good thing that the Alpha 6, uh, we dropped the Alpha 5 for, because of a brown break release, by the way. Um, so the Alpha 6 was, uh, there's this uh, variable bug ridden piece of beep uh that was uh, had a, a couple of nasty nasty bugs uh, especially in in classic related to javascript uh stuff and uh, navigation just tiny things but that made your experience as a developer really hard so i'm happy that was not the beta but the beta is now out there are release notes there's actually a news item uh, at least today it was uh, there there is one and we're quickly going through the most important features <coughs> of the beta one that came in since we last discussed uh, the state of Plone 6. So this is not everything that happened between Plone 5, 2 and 6, because that list would be pretty long. Uh, this is the main features that went into uh, Plone, uh, Plone beta one since alpha 4. Yeah. Um, so, Philip, you talked about bugs and stability and the brown rec rec release that often uh, happens, and it will still happen in the in the beta cycle where we also have. I must say, our release manager Maritz uh, added a nice uh, 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 extra uh, paragraph or link to something. I, I forgot the actual one, but he also talked a bit about the rules of uh, we're now blown beta one and what he as as the release manager. Uh, 
expects from from things that still can go into plown and i think the, the the basic rule is anything that improves stability or fixes bugs that are in there are fine but please don't extend the scope please don't yeah. add new things that we would really love to have that are really valuable and everybody would share but would Get, get into give us a real risk of uh, 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 having to work another six months to stabilize it again. So that's the basic uh, rule now. We're now in beta, uh, kind of feature complete. Uh, if if something is obviously not uh, going to uh, uh, endanger the current stability or make it more stable, it's fine. But otherwise, wrap up. <laughs> yes, and there's still true. a lot of wrapping up to do. But first, the features. I'm, I'm happy with the state of it. So yeah, uh, tiny thing that we added uh, a couple of months back is TinyMC now has can be used in inline mode. So there's a not very well hidden checkbox in the TinyMC configuration of the ad site when they can c click it. And uh, when you press edit, you have a inline TinyMC. I'm not sure if I'm actually going to use it. I pushed for it and I worked on it, but uh, it's it's a nice thing to have because uh, instantly all the CSS uh, of your website are accessible. It's a real what you see is what you get, uh, different from uh, the TinyMC in by default that is rendered in an iframe with a set of predefined CSS that you can extend, obviously, but it's it's a diff totally different visual experience. Um, obviously, I'm, I'm talking about classic, not Volvo. Yeah, in and this if, case. if I'm not mistaken, Philip, the, the inline mode is also used in Mosaic, I think, for the text uh, rich ex text terrier tiles. Or is that is it a technical discussion now with having it uh, in an object or in an iframe in an object? That, that is the inline mode. Uh, no, it's it's not in an iframe anymore. It's um, I, I forgot about the details how uh, uh -huh, yeah. TinyMC actually does it, but it renders it uh, in in there yeah. and pull. Um, yeah. It's yeah. it's JavaScript. Hey, what do you expect? What do you expect? Um, but it's but it's a very cool thing to keep up with TinyMC because we've right. in the past we've had a few times where where we were kind of stuck with a, a TinyMC major release for way too long where it seemed to be a lot of work to to integrate it again into Plown, and yeah, if you like it or not, we as developers we look at a lot of things like Plown and and the WYSIWYG editor is a bit like oh yeah okay that also has to work sometimes I'm paraphrasing more myself my own mentality sometimes in the past, but if you look at it all your editors are living in this tiny MCE a lot of the time. So tiny M the tiny MCE integration is really important because that's where, where a lot of the copy editing work happens. That's true. Uh, Another thing, Yoda. So I, I mentioned bugs. Uh, one one issue that came with the uh, with the previous beta is uh, jQuery wasn't available, um, and now uh, jQuery Global is thanks to Peter Mattis. Just wanted to share that beautiful pic. Um, um, and same with uh, Bootstrap. So these are now globally available and they're integrated using module federation. So if you depend, uh, if you have a bundle that depends on jQuery, um, it does not load jQuery twice. It uses the jQuery that you had before. Uh, we yeah. also updated to, to Bootstrap 5.2. I think we already mentioned that uh, last time. I'm not sure. No, maybe. Yeah, I think that was it was work in progress then, or maybe also yeah. in the in the alpha one. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, also keeping up with Bootstrap the five series. Uh, Bootstrap 5.0. I mean, Bootstrap is, is obviously an ab abstraction to uh, to very quickly uh, uh, style a website using uh, all the, the the Bootstrap. Yeah, it's 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 an, it's an API. I mean, you have to, these classes and you connect them. But yep. Bootstrap underneath then uses, of course, the core CSS uh, 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 capabilities of your browsers, and that a lot has happened. And also, amongst other things, CSS Grid. And from what I understand now, Bootstrap 5.2 underneath can use the full Bootstrap grid functionality, I'm which will, will help you if you want to uh, if you want to also use the CSS grid uh, functionality because Bootstrap five itself before that used Flexbox as the main way to lay out things. So that's uh, that's a really nice improvement. And there's also I think another oh yeah you also mentioned that the drop downs uh, another functionality of that has been updated and upgraded in Bootstrap. So al also there together with Tiny MCE. Uh, Cool. Just we're keeping up. We're keeping up with the Joneses uh, for, yeah, our, for our we're, dependencies. We're benefiting from their improvements in this case. 
Uh, we also there was a reimplementation of the toolbar submenus and the collapsed icons that was already uh, announced. So that is in, in in the beta as well. It looks very similar to the previous implementation in uh, Plone 5.2. Uh, there is a whole bunch. We're still talking about Plum Classic, and now we're touching stuff slowly that uh, reaches both uh, and that that relates to uh, the back end of Volta as well. Uh, a, lo a lot of uh, um, stuff change related to images. Let's start with the easy ones. Finally, yeah, it's 2022. Uh, the logo of a default plone site when you create it fresh is now a SVG. Yes, it was a PNG until, uh, I don't know, two months ago, and that's a bit um, ridiculous. But finally, this was done. And now you, mm. if you update, uh, upload an image in the uh, control panel, you can use the SVG, and that's going to be used. So that's a nice, nice tiny, but uh, a bit embarrassing change. If people uh, reviewed Plone uh, for the first time, time classic uh then they had this uh yeah. png um, image there yeah. and it, it, it sounds like five minute work but indeed what you mentioned after the, it's also the upload of your own custom svg and we already we were using it in plan 5.2 i think but you always had to then customize the css and do other funny things because if you were if you didn't look out your F svg could blow up uh, to the whole page when there was any error or other things so you you had to customize it and now it's working uh, really nicely out of the box Yeah, that's true. Also related to images, now images show up in the f search, so in the quick search or the live search when you t enter something. If the item is an image or has images, you see the image preview, which is really nice if you have a feature like an image gallery or something like that in your website. I mean, for editors to pick stuff, and so that's really nice. Uh, or news items with a lot of images. Um, Also, um, same as in the default search page, by the way, not only the, uh, the quick, uh, quick search. And uh, a big thing is uh, that is something that Maurits worked on at the Buschenschank Sprint is that creating an image tag no longer actually creates the actual image scale. So this is now deferred until the browser actually requests the image scale. Uh, this makes... Uh, your database smaller but uh, actually this is the main main thing uh less database bloat um so that's a really really good thing yeah well so, going back philip it was not only the database size the whole the other problem was that if you uh, uh with the, the photo uh, front end being decoupled from the Uh, from the page generation was that sometimes photo calls for an image and then with this feature uh, uh, not there suddenly uh, uh, a whole slew of all Im kind of image skills were already uh, generated at the same time which made the page load very slow because plone was then furiously sc scaling all the images if they hadn't been scaled and cached already so the first hit of a page uh, would sometimes take multiple seconds if there was something going going wrong there Uh, and yep. that's that's really so. This is uh, indeed what you said. We're now going a bit down, down, down uh, uh, in in the, in the whole uh, image handling thing, where it now it's is is there are a lot of improvements in the in the core handling of image images, image scales, image storage, uh, uh, that will benefit uh, Plone 6 upwards greatly, both classic and uh, and Volto. Yeah. So the next really big thing that's been worked on for quite some time is source sets. So Fred. What are source sets? Um, yeah, I so we, source we, code. What's in the source, source set? set? So we already had this feature in Plone 5.1, since Plone 5.1. Really? Yes, we had. But then it was called high DPI support. And uh, it's, 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 I think it's a, it's, a, it's a cool thing. I'm surprising Philip now because he was like, huh? Because that's, that. Was the, that was the basic. Yes, you knew. You know that was in there. <laughs> um, but we had a, so. F uh, Many screens, especially mobile iPad, now have higher resolution. It was kind of coined by Apple called Retina, and that's, but that's a brand name, and it's all called officially high, uh, high DPI. And most of your uh, phones and tablets nowadays uh, have like, like high DPI skills of, and you would think like two times or three times, uh, but there are actually some phones that have 2.4 or 3.1 or 2.75 or really strange uh, things. But the, the, the basic principle is that You used to have, for example, a, a, a nice computer with an HD screen of 1920 by 1080 pixels. Um, and now everything, all the, every pixel is actually four pixels. So there's four mini pixels. So actually, and you get a much higher resolution. And what your browser says is, look, 
if I'm going to show a picture on the normal monitor, but the monitor actually can show four times as much density information, I'll just try to swap and, do and load a, a higher resolution image to make it much crisper and much clearer. Yeah, and that's you, you visually see, you really see the difference visually. And you really see the difference where, of course, the big requirement is you have to have the image in this resolution because otherwise, yeah, you, it doesn't bring very much. But then with the advent of much higher resolution images, so what could happen, for example, you upload now a, a thousand uh, a pixels wide image, and then there's a source set information in the image that says, okay, if you want to have the normal version, download a link to, to this scaled version, which only has like 400 pixels, but extra, if, if you said that you wanted to hit 400 pixels, but then an extra, it adds an extra line in the source that says, look, but there's also an 800 uh, 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 pixel image. And then uh, you can use it for a high DPI monitor. And for some, the, 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 the most expensive phones nowadays have three times HDPI. So then you could say, oh, look, there's also a, still a 1200 version available. Uh, 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 where it kind of gets a bit shady if you can actually see that uh, unless you are doing this. But that's, that's the basic feature. You, you are offering the browser when it has to render an image, your browser, you're offering them, them multiple sources where the browser can pick the best version depending on the local environment. So, so that's already how does how does that t get tied together with the existing image scale feature that we have, and since it's Plone, how do you configure that? Everything is configurable in Plone. Yeah, well, l let me continue first because source sets were already there for the high DPI, of course. But the other, the bigger advancement now is that we uh, we are living in a responsive world, and that is where the the browsers have been been picking up uh, uh, and and adding this feature of source sets. And, and extending the, the image and then actually now the picture tag uh, to a much better scale. Because if you watch an, an image, if you watch a, 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 a website on a desktop and the image is like, like a, a header image, like two, 1,200 pixels on HD DPI, that becomes 2,400 pixels. That's quite a huge, that's still, I mean, we have a lot of bandwidth nowadays, but that's a little lit. But if somebody from an eye, from a desktop uh, or, 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 or goes to mobile, then that, that same header, you don't need to send more than, than, uh, than, than, than 400 pixels maybe. Or maybe if you double it with high DPI, it's only 800 pixels max. So, and then you get into a big problem. If you look at how we did it in Plone for many, many, many years, you picked one scale and the scale had a size and that's, that was it. There was, was nothing it. else yeah. there. So you, with the modern browser, you have to completely decouple uh, the, the um, the, 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 the source image from what you're actually delivering to the client. And we've been talking about that. You said, okay, we finally have this. And it's not like that hasn't been happening in uh, a lot in the Plone community. We've been talking about this for years, but the, 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 the basic premise of, okay, we have a scale name connected to a width and now decoupling it for, for much better responsive and much better bandwidth and other, and, and, and other, all those other fancy things is a huge shift, uh, which now finally has been made in Plone 6. Um, and this is only the beginning. This is only the beginning what, what, uh, uh, what, what has been achieved by, by the community. So let me very quickly try to share my screen. Yeah, there we go. Um, so first, there is documentation already on this. I think uh, Mike uh, uh, Der Stappen, who has been, I think, the, one of the principal developers working on a lot of the image handling uh, 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 things here. Uh, but that to, I, I'm probably start to forget people. Uh, Maritz has done a lot of work uh, from the photo side already. Nicola Sambella has fixed and came up with these issues last year and before optimizing the image block. Maritz has done a lot of work. That's also our, our client-related work for focal points last year where things are done. Uh, uh, then there's a whole thing in the catalog of things we'll talk about later, I think, with Jens Klein. Uh, uh, Sorry, I'm forgetting. I get back to your Nate. I mean, there's. I'm also mentioning a few pe a few people now. Peter Holzer, uh, uh, with all the, a lot of people have been working on this. Uh, but I think it's it's fair to say that that Mike has probably done most of the work, a lot of a, a large large part of the of the work and thinking through. And yeah. I've been nagging people as well uh, now and then with is this really cute? But, but then again, I'm I'm not a developer. I'm. Uh, I'm, I'm the principal uh, nagging, are you sure is this working or how can we improve uh, guy? 
So for development, my role has not really been there. Um, okay, test page. I've, up, I've created a page here with some images. Uh, sorry, some Dutch, but this is look shiny plone six. It now says image. It says the, the, the width size here already. You can download or you can even see the full size. So, no, so nothing. We're demo, demoing. Uh, Fred is demoing a local, uh, locally uh, set up. Yeah, uh, sorry. Classic, this is, this is classic plone site. Classic beta. Classic beta. Uh, plone, uh, beta one site now. I've, I've just uploaded a few images, and this is a really huge one. This is like four thousand pixels wide. So if I if I would need any width, I can I can do it with this. Okay. Then I've created a test page, and the test page is just a tiny MCE where I've inserted an image on the left, and I have this huge image here which is the, 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 the 4,000 thingy, which is not actually 4,000 pixels. Okay, so what happens now if you look at, and I'm, I, I uh, kind of sold this to Philip to, to quickly show this in the, in the devel developer tools, because I was stunned myself for half an hour, and I thought, this isn't working in the beta one. This isn't working. So there's a nasty trick. Maybe f Chrome does it a little bit better, but I don't think so. If you now look at this image, you will see here, it's no longer just an image. Is that still visible? Yeah, it's, you, you can see it's it even it a bit better. bigger. Yeah. That's so he's better. inspecting the HTML yeah. source so code I'm inspecting and there's the source a source code. set information. Yeah, so there's a source set information here. And what you used to have in, uh, what you would just insert an image tag uh, uh, with uh, uh, the link and you could have a source set attribute inside the image. But we're now using the picture container which has an image as a fallback, but we, above that is now the source, which you can see because I'm showing it in the dev tools of, of this time, Firefox. And if you look at it, you will say, okay, there's nothing has one. changed. There's only one, look, there's the, 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 the fallback one is going now here. And if you look really closely at the scale link we create, there's now some extra information like this image thousand, this will, will help uh, in Google get, maybe get better later. But there's also here the 1600 one, and, and that's about it. The secret is if you double click here, now you it suddenly expands. see it expands. And what you now see is that we tell the browser when this image is here that there are a number of scales available for 1,400, 600, 800, and 1,200 width. And now the magic goes if you go to the network tab and I make this, oh, that are our, our, our secret notes for what we're going to discuss, hide that. Um, and the browser decides which one it picks. And so now, the now nothing tab, happens. You can see that. Yeah, so I'm now scrolling back. Of course, nothing happens. But if yeah. a new user would, would want to show this image and, oh, you see, actually, it is doing something. But if I'm now yeah, throwing away scales. my logs and reloading things, you will see that it will now not longer get the, th the thousand one. You see, it will... And, and, you see, it's 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 after loading the 1600, and now it's only it's still in desktop mode. You can even see it better when I start simulating a small uh, phone. For example, here now it really gets tiny, and now if I reload, oh, should clear and reload. Now it still gets on the. Yeah, it uses some. Um, sometimes it, uh, the cache is uh, because it's still in the browser. Cache is probably okay. I, I got I got it down to uh, a few times with with eight hundred and, and yeah, four hundred. Yeah, same, same demo. here. Um, so, but you see, it's already picking different ones uh, based on on the images uh, which are there. Um, and w th this is what I meant with the beta because I tested it myself. We still have to optimize it here because it really depends on on the size of your browser window, the size of the images. And another thing is what we really haven't touched yet, and now we're going into the, in the control panel to see how this is working. Because if I now disable my edit and I start editing, you will see that the scale is now actually decoupled. If I go to this image and say edit, you will see there is no longer a huge list of scales. There is just really? large, medium and small. Yeah, by default, we're only shipping these uh, three scales now. And um, the source sets, you can configure the source sets to say, okay, this are, is the number of uh, scales that we want to have available in this size. Exactly. And, and that's on the other screen. Yeah. Continue talking, Philip. <laughs> yeah, there's a JSON configuration. I hate JSON because the, the trailing commas that I always forget to remove in the last line, but it, it works fine. Uh, after you wrap your head around that, 
uh, and there is like medium, and you see the medium has the largest in medium is great. Uh, sorry, yeah, uh, yeah. is great, and the largest in large. If you scroll up a little, oh, sorry, uh, yeah, not yeah. In small uh, is huge. So that's that's the main difference. That in the large images, if you pick large, uh, the source set will also contain the link for the huge. Uh, image, whereas the medium and small ones uh, only contain less. Um, this will prevent the browser from uh, being, actually, for some reason, able to load a huge scale uh, for a tiny, uh, yeah, not a tiny image, uh, image that you want to display in a small way. Yeah. And if you look at, we still have the original uh, uh, skill sets here, but those are actually decoupled and referenced from Yes. The picture variants and only listed here. And what you see here, we've added a number of skills for Plon 6 by default because those are now required because of the high DPI uh, uh, things that I, I also talked about. Um, but And this is only the beginning. I mean, there's a lot of work we're going to discuss next that are down here. And there's still some quirks here like, okay, this is a kind of uh, the easiest hack to make sure that we uh, uh, de decouple the width from the aspect ratio, which is a whole different subject that we are also now able uh, to support in me de more detail, uh, maybe not in the default uh, version of, of, for example, classic UI for Plone 6, but I, I think already Volto uh, has, has more controls for that. And uh, there will be a lot of improvement here, uh, uh, I think, in, in next Plone versions based on all the, the field and groundwork that has been done now uh, by, by having this, uh, this decoupled. Yeah, the, an interesting side effect of that is in Plone App image uh Image cropping. Image cropping. Uh, you have, now have a lot of scales that you can crop in different ways. And since the scales are used in the source set, uh, a source set can have different scales that actually look different. So depending on how you move your screen and which image is loaded, you can look at different images. That is maybe not what you want. So maybe plone up image cropping uh, might need to be rethought with this uh, idea in mind. But yeah, it's uh, it is really it's a it's a huge improvement uh, right now, and you're showing an error page. I'm trying to show what was the call. Ah, there it is. Sorry, I missed typo. Images test. Um, yeah, that's nice. This is this is a very nice feature added also to experiment with it. I th uh, Maurits added this, I think, maybe with some other people. Um, so you have got an images test view now that on the context tries to find all the images that are there and then gives you all kinds of views what happens when you do uh, uh, different uh, directions of the scaling. Uh, it shows you the picture tag large, medium and small, which are coming from the control panel that we just show you. Um, and it also then has a list of all the stored skills that are actually already generated and available with some metadata here. And I yeah. think, Philip, that would be a nice opening for the whole catalog improvements yeah, if, that were made. Do you want to continue? If you, scro if you scroll to the bottom of that page, there is a useful link uh, to clear all existing scales from the database so they can be created fresh. Because sometimes you have caching issues in this res uh, in this regard. Uh, there are some ed maybe some edge cases. Um, can we drop the image scales catalog metadata -ish, uh, task? It's very back end. I it's very back end, but I think we could we could suffice to say, look, that, that with all the image handling, there are like three main categories of improvements. The first is what we now showed, like the source sets, which are down there, which are is generating the 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 the, the coolest, newest possible HTML5 uh, for uh, for having the browser being able to to serve and download the best image. Then the second part is what you all this information what you see here is a lot of uh, work by by uh, by also the same but also a number of different uh, developers to have much more information about uh, images uh, in the catalog so that it's it, it you don't have to wake up an image and calculate all kinds of things on the image before you know which skills are available. And it's indeed uh, maybe for another time, or maybe we'll, we'll, we'll find someone again to explain that uh, to to everybody who's listening. Um, but th that's that was that definitely speeds up a lot of the the work Plone has to do, especially on a first page uh, serve uh, when nothing is there. I mean, afterwards you can cache it, but now there's a lot of lot more metadata in the catalog for each context that makes uh, image handling and also these features uh, much speedier. Yeah. Um, if you should stop your sharing, I can quickly yeah. show yeah. what's yeah. what's in there 
uh, so that people have a br uh, small idea. So this is, uh, it's obviously not in the catalog, so you ca you don't need to, uh, it's it's not in the index, so you can't search for that, but it's on the brain. It's a uh, brain metadata. So this yeah. is the Good metadata of, for, for, for an image object. And here are all the uh, image scales. This is a new field. Um, I think Jens Klein did most of the work on that uh, together with others. And this is now here. So you can do listings, including images with full access to uh, to scales without waking up objects for uh, lists of uh, images that is a huge uh, performance improvement definitely yeah. oh, shout out uh, alessandro pisa worked with that oh, also yes. as well and piero nicoli also worked out they were they were standing outside at the, at the beethoven sprint around a large whiteboard that was moved outside in the in the garden of the kit concept office and they had been they were circling there for like one and a half hours with other people chiming in and designing all this um Maurits, of course, was there as well, and I kind of looked from the distance. <laughs> yeah. Okay, let's move away from images and go yeah. to something completely different, and this is going to be a theatrical uh, performance quickly. Uh, listen closely. Uh, improved performance of the clone named file blobs modifier, which is used to handle dexterity named blob file and named blob image fields, which creating and retrieving with while recreating and retrieving versions. Previously, the content of the blobs were copied to a new blob were copied to a new blob, but that is unnecessary and slow. Now the modifier simply ensures that the version retains a reference to the existing blob and so on. Uh, this is the uh, the change note to a, a really nice improvement. Uh, welcome back, David Glick. Um, so let's try to translate this. Uh, David Glick uh, left the Plone community, not, not the community, but he left uh, Plone as a day job uh, to work for Salesforce for a couple of years, and now he's back, and we're really happy to have him back. So um, thanks, David, for this change. For humans, this means that when you create something, a content that is versioned uh, and has the blob field, for example, a news item that has an image field, uh, creating that is much faster and much, is, that's a capital M. Uh, also, the database will not grow unnecessarily on editing said news item unless you actually change the image. Um, that's a really nice improvement. Uh, if you have a lot of versioned uh, data with blobs, uh, this makes a real difference when creating stuff. Uh, this is one of the main reasons why I always disable uh, versioning when importing content using export import because the, uh, the event handlers are on storing uh, the first revision uh, are doing did stuff that David uh, told the uh, handler now no longer to do. Uh, great, great change. Uh, that's, another, that's, a, that's a recurring yeah. theme we have, of course, that for normal content editing and things to do where you upload single single things or edit stuff, there's a lot of securities and checks and balances uh, to, to make sure that everything is smooth and still consistent. But when you start migrating or upgrading, uh, it's a constant battle to turn off all those things because your, your, your whole plone site will be in an inconsistent state for a while while everything is upgraded, migrated, or put into place again. Yeah, I, uh, I always think my, 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 the website is in panic mode because uh, the, 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 the import <laughs> screen is touching everything at the same time. And the website is why is everything happening at the same time? And there's these event handlers for link integrity, and they parse the HTML, and they look for the targets and create relations, and it, it's just madness for the system. Yeah, yeah. Uh, a big thing. Um, we now support Python 3.10. Yay. Uh, Yay. The beta actually has Python 3.10 support. Um, it is a bit uh, not, not premature, but it's not 100% support in the core it is. But if you want to create an add-on, for example, using Bob Templates Plone, this doesn't work yet because Mr. Bob didn't support uh, Plone, uh, Python 3.10. Uh, I fixed that, but it still needs to be merged and released with a new version. So not all add-ons and not the whole ecosystem may run on Python 3.10, uh, but we're, we're getting there and the core obviously already works on 3.10. But we are just, this is so boring, 3.10. 
311. That's going yeah, to be exciting. Yeah, I was, I was going, oh, I, what, what, can I say it? No, you're, you're yes. okay. You're, 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 yeah, you're uh, for me. You, you, you do it. You do it. So, so yeah, keeping up with keeping up with the Python versions is, is important because, uh, of course, the Python Software Foundation has changed the rules uh, a few, one or two years ago, where we are going now like like much more minor, which is still 390 than 311 releases. Uh, but there has been a lot of uh, 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 fuss and activity around making Python faster for many years already. Uh, uh, don't search for global interpreter lock, for example. Um, but all those efforts from many organizations and many people worldwide for Python for many uh, use cases, 3.11 now lands uh, a lot of these improvements. And the, 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 it's like, well, should we say between 1.2 and 1.4 for many low-level benchmarks and, and things that, that will probably also benefit Plone. So, yeah, you could say, okay, why 310? Yeah, because doing this exercise, uh, 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 if you, uh, keeping up with the latest uh, 310 will also make it much less work to go to the next 311, which has all these very nice uh, uh, carrots uh, dangling yeah. if you look online for, uh, for the current. And it's already in beta, I think, 311. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's in, it's yeah. in beta. Yeah, speed, Plone is a speed. It's going to be a speed king, definitely <laughs> with three ten. Excited about that, and also yeah, three has uh, the, the other versions of three have nice improvements. For example, the Walrus operator, my colleague uh, Thomas, uh, he loves it. He uses it all the time. And first time, uh, what does it do again? Oh, I need to remember. Uh, now I did, I think. Uh, yeah. so stuff like that. Uh, but we have uh, one more user-facing thing, uh, and we're first going to show it in, in, in Classic. So obviously uh, the whole uh, blob thing that David did and the image scales and Python version, that all ben Plone uh, Classic benefits uh, from that as well as Plone uh, Volto, Plone non-classic, uh, the real Plone. Uh, and this is another thing. Uh, let me share my screen because now uh, the uh, uh, support for negation query operators has landed in Plone. Um, I'm going to uh, create a collection in first in classic, um, a collection, bam. And now you see in the cr criteria, we have uh, more uh, features because now we can say, uh, show me everything that is not a folder. Uh, I probably have to select something. So negative queries. This is everything that is not a folder or not, and not an image. And uh, this, uh, this list is then updated. And another one is uh, that uh, in, in the back end, this is called um, is not. And in, uh, no, it's, it's none. <laughs> I think it's called none. It's uh, in, in in human readable terms. It matches none of. I'm not sure if that's the best translation into <laughs> English, but matches none of folder and image. I I, I kind of see where you tried to go there, uh, developer person who did that. <laughs> um, but good. Uh, so another thing would be uh, not title. That's I think the ID would be uh, the right thing for that. Uh, short name is not. So the short name is not a image, for example, then everything where the short name is not an image uh, shows up. So this is actually called is not. The other one is none. So this is nice. Uh, and as I said, this is uh, not only happening in classic because it's a configuration thing in the back end. If you go to uh, the Plone uh, 6 uh, demo using Volto, uh, you have the same feature in uh, if you create a page uh with a listing block um let's add a listing block here you have the exact same options now matches none off and if you it depends on the index obviously that you're looking for but if you want the uh, hang on uh not type but then the short name uh, again, you have is not. So that's a really nice example how improvements in, in Plone as a configurable and componentized uh, a system made of components um, automatically is, uh, uh, is, is benefited, a change in that is benefited in any front end because this is the, the short name selector here. This is not just a written 
uh, by hand. It's not hard coded. This uses all the configuration of uh, the, the the query uh, query string uh, tools and the reg stuff that's in the registry there. Yeah, and it gets and it gets that, moved. It gets moved to REST API for, for Volto or any other front that you have. So these improvements here are really nice. And it's, I mean, and, and we have had that this power of, of more advanced searches has, has already been there in the application server on the SOAP level and the SOAP catalog level. I mean, there even have been, been add-ons in the past to do parts of this. But then it was all like always like, like you nearly need to new Python and develop this really on, on the back end in your custom code. And adding these uh, these if you there you know in the uh, yeah in the query string configuration as you said it's it's independent of the reg it's in the registry as well it yeah. now comes both in classic and uh, so I'm I'm really excited there that there's been because this has been not touched for a very long time and there are are also other optimizations or features that you would like to maybe expose later also through the. Uh, uh, in the UI for, for editors to create a, a bit more complex uh, uh, thing. So this is a really cool addition in a long time uh, uh, where you have, can now have a bit more power without being overwhelmed. I mean, because there would also you could also say, okay, let's give us a complete query editor by text again for power users, uh, but that's a completely different beast. Yeah. And um, talking about Volto, there's another new feature in the beta. Uh, it actually was in the last alpha as well. That's the migrate to Volto form. So I'm sharing it here. So when you uh, upgrade an existing site from I don't know five two to six, uh, the results page have link has a link. You can now decide to move to Volto if you want, and this will take you here. This is a nice uh, little form uh, where you can uh, uh, you probably should read that. And uh, you can click a box and it'll prepare all your content uh, to migrate to Volto. I think we covered part of that already. Um, not sure if we want, should dive into that because we're already at minute 40 and we want it to be yeah, at minute 20. Yeah, I'm doing 20. a really bad, I'm yeah. doing a bad, bad job now as a timekeeper because I talk myself uh, a bit more. <laughs> Uh, but Philip, I still want to ask you because I saw you working on this uh, uh, with people at the, at the Beethoven Sprint, and this this is I mean it looks very fancy now. Hey, Marco, to Volto and you're done. But you correctly said it prepares your site for Volto because there are some really tricky, well, not not tricky, but but there are some 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 things because Volto changes part of the of the uh, of, of the of the content. Uh, 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 how do you call it? The, the, the content configuration, how it works. And one of those things is that, for example, uh, you have a folderish page or a pages folder now by default in Volta. I mean, a page is by default also folderish, and you can add a, a stream of blocks on, on top of that, that page. But the distinction between folder and page is, is different from uh, what, you, what we used to have for default in Classic UI. And yeah. the second part is the default page. The default page is by default no longer there in Volto. And when you try to map a content tree with a folder that has a page, and the page is set as the the default view, and you go to Volto, then a folder with a page should be migrated to a folderish page with the content of the page on the folder. And it, I think I'm now voicing it. If you don't understand this, that's that's fine because this is really the, if you if you start thinking about moving sites between Classic UI and Volto, or even between any other kind of content configuration, these are the the things you would like to have solved. Yes, exactly. So not to add another 15 minutes to the podcast by you explaining this all in detail, but these are the things you really have to understand. And there's, if you can see, there's already uh, quite a few hints on the, on the migration page. So, Philip, very shortly, what are, what are, uh, what are the, in five minutes, how can you, uh, yeah. what are, what are the, 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 the choices? What are the, the, the tastes in the... So, so the, the easy, uh, let's pick the easy things first, because that is, that's yeah. what, what, why people want to do that is they, they have a document and they want to use, see the content of that document in Volto, which wouldn't appear uh, by default, because uh, Volto uses the uh, Slate block editor and uh, Classic just has some HTML uh, in, in, a, in, a, in a text field. Uh, this migration um, takes care of that. So the text, 
with images and tables and whatnot is transferred into slate blocks. Uh, also draft blocks if you really want to be like old school. Uh, but that, that is, that's the important thing. Most, uh, but the other things, we discussed that a lot and we came up with some decent uh, recommendations. So these are the de default settings, but if you want, you can uh, switch them off. And the way to understand them is by actually really looking at the site that you have and looking at a folder with a default page and a folder with a default collection that is a default page and a folder that doesn't have a default page. If you have these three use cases and you discuss them individually, you can you understand the, the choices you have to make here. By default, we're doing uh, all of them because we're transferring a folder uh, that has documents in it and has a listing view, for example, um, into a folderish page with a listing block. Uh, so there is no going to be no folder in your site anymore afterwards. If you have a folder with a default page that is a document, for example, then the content of the document is transformed into slate blocks. Uh, the folder is transformed into a folderish page and the slate blocks from the default page are added to the slate uh, to the uh, to the content of the folderish page like so, my intro. Th that also means the uuid of one of these two items is going to be gone and the object's going to be gone it's going to either be going to be the folder or the default page we decided to remove the default page and keep the folder's uuid in place and the id um, and the third thing is uh, collections uh, are no longer available in Volto. So uh, they are, you can switch them on, you can use them, it works fine, but it's much nicer and more flexible to just use a page with a collect, uh, with a listing block, which yep. has the exact same features as a collection. And that's what we're changing all collections into pages with listing blocks, same with uh, if the default page is a collection with a listing block, that's going to be a block on the uh, on the folderish page. So there's so stop many it, things. Stop it! Stop yes, it! Yes, I've, stop it! I've lost you. Many yes. everybody has lost you, but I think I yeah. think you're doing a good job because you're. I mean, what we're trying to tell everybody: don't don't just press that button. This is this is this is stuff you have to think through. Check on, have a copy of your site. Look yeah. at the old stuff. Look at the new stuff. Do things. This is really if, if it's. I mean, we would have loved to 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 create a one a, a one button that says fix it all and 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 migrate. We've been able to do that for a long time. But when we have this, like they call it very nicely, paradigm shifts of how you how the content is organized. Uh, 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 yes, there will be some dragons. There are uh, most of the times small, tiny, cute dragons, but don't press that button without thinking it through. Uh, uh, Philip and other people have done a lot of work to, to also create this already and think stuff, but we can't automate this. Yeah, that's true. So um, I'm, I just I would actually recommend to just press the button, read the text first, and then just press the button on a copy of on it, a like copy as, on as, a copy as 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 with every yes. upgrade, obviously. And then you can look at some edge cases and see what's going to be uh, where. Uh, there is documentation for that. I try to make it as. Uh, as I write as much as make as it makes sense, and it was quite a lot. And you can uh, you can call all that code, these forms, and the, the 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 methods that they use in your own upgrade steps. You can have a, up, a migration chain that takes your site from five two uh, or plone three or whatnot to plone six and call these methods on the way and it does all the work for you. That's actually what I'm doing, my migration project. I'm calling the stuff that I wrote there. I'm not going to that form and click a button. I'm, uh, my, that's, that's not what I'm paid for, for clicking buttons. I'm just calling my own code. So, You're correct um, for building, building, uh, building buttons. That yeah, stuff. some. Yeah, yeah. Actually, I press them sometimes. It's so, fun. Philip, is, I mean, this is a very nice addition for the for the migration part, especially for for uh, if you have a, a plain stock default plan site. Uh, other other news, other things in in better one on the photo one. Of course, Slate. Slate is the is the biggest thing that was there, but is now default and on which Photo can now go to. Uh, a, a final release where Slate is default everywhere. Yeah, um, so the, the we have some other. already has that. It's just the Slate editor is the default now in the in Volta yeah. sixteen dot uh, alpha fifteen, I think. Um, 
and uh, this yeah. is that's a great improvement most uh, Bigger projects already used uh, used uh, Slate as an add-on, uh, as did I. Um, but if you if you use uh, blocks now, now your new sites are using Slate. So yeah. this is a huge improvement. Yeah. Uh, but there are two more that yeah. we should mention. Uh, one is there is now a, a user group membership control panel uh, that Katja Seuss wrote. I uh, hope it's on the demo. Actually, I haven't checked it, but it should be on. There's groups. Hang on. Uh, there it says groups, and if you go to, uh, I didn't create any, but you can search for groups and you can uh, manage the uh, the members of a group, um, and add yeah, add a group and all all that. I'm not going to go into detail here, but because I haven't prepared a site for that. But now, yeah, excellent. We have a user group membership control panel uh, that was missing for a while. And a very nice thing that I was missing for a while uh, was a default view for content. So if you have schema-based uh, content, so you create your own content type, say uh, mm -hmm. here my content type is called foo, and uh, add a couple of fields to that. Uh, no, not like this. Here in the uh, schema, uh, schema editor, I add uh, more fields. Yeah, these um, ones you already, already get for free. This is the yeah, this basic is metadata. The, yeah, this is a field set. Hang on. Um, uh, where do I here, <laughs> add a field? I'm not yeah. using the through the web stuff uh, all that much. But if you say, okay, there is a another field. Let's call it a text field. Okay. Some text. Uh, and you save that content type and you create that content type, which should be available right now. Uh, Ooh, have, there it is. Yeah, yeah. And I add some text in my text field, some text, and I save. Now actually the some text shows up. So that's a nice improvement. It's like the old default view in archetypes and dexterity in Plone Classic. It just iterates over the schema and renders title, description, and whatever fields make sense in this case with a label. So this is not really for your end user unless your end user is just sh show me structured data it doesn't have to be beautiful but it's really useful when developing okay yeah, exactly. i see all my data yeah it's it is it is gold for migrating before you write your volta views and you migrate really complex content types i see oh my data is actually there and i didn't have to inspect the python objects so that's nice exactly you have to you have to inspect the schema beforehand create your own view add back all the fields just to check if the migration was there and now it's all listed there. I mean, it's not nice, but that's not the reason. If you want to have it look nice, you'll have to design uh, another view for that. I, I think it's nice. It's, it's, it's useful, but, but uh, beauty is in the eye of the beholder, obviously. <laughs> you, you're the data guy. <laughs> <laughs> so wh wh we're, in, we're in better now. What does it mean? Uh, are we done? What should you do? What should you do? A try? Test, uh, help with documentation, uh, help with stability, uh, help with translations. Translations are also something that I think last month was uh, paid uh, more attention to, to also update the, the locales, uh, uh, update the scripts. Uh, we will need quite a bit of uh, attention to uh, many languages that haven't been catered for a few years that were probably fine with Plone 5.2, but because now with Plone 6 and Volto getting in there for the first time, there's a lot of translations that need to be checked, and there are a lot of new translations in the Volto uh, uh, package, which has its own uh, uh, translations uh, registry. Yeah, a and the most important thing is it is uh, stable in that way that we as developer community will not break it internationally. There's not gonna be breaking changes. So you're safe to use it in your projects, uh, obviously, you need to test it before you go into production if all the features that you're using for your projects are actually working 100% as you expect them to. There will be some bugs probably. Uh, I already saw some uh, some small bug fixes in the last couple of days, uh, but nothing nothing really annoying of, or, or they, at least they didn't annoy me. So it is say if you have a huge project or you, you, you're in a, you're planning to go live in a month even, um, 
just use this version. Don't stick with 5.2 because you say Plon 6 is not stable enough. Obviously, you have to check all the requirements against this version. Uh, for example, if you require an add-on that is not ported yet, but that is that's that's not going to change when the final version is there. Obviously, it may it may change if someone else uses that add-on. For example, we have a project where we use EA faceted navigation. We use it to death in so many projects. And so um, we're happy to have uh, a client who's, who uh, allowed us to hire uh, AutoWeb uh, to migrate uh, EA faceted navigation to Plone 6 and update all the markup and the JavaScript to actually work in this new, new beautiful land of Plone 6. Yes. Yes, uh, as, I, as, I, as I said, uh, Maurice announced, look, this is better one. If something improves stability, it's fine by me, but we're not going to add any new feature uh, that ca that could cause uh, 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 more instability. Yeah. So that's really converging now to uh, to a final release. So, Philip, to, you know, we're not going to catch up. We're going to do an hour and something again for a podcast, yeah. like usual. I mean, it's, it's podcast nine. Who, who are we fooling that we could now beat ourselves? Uh, yeah, after, after? Who, who cares? It's, uh, you're going to spend your vacation uh, listening to this podcast anyway. Oh, by the way, be three bored months. On the beach. We could have. So we, 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 we are entitled to a three-hour podcast. No, 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 no. News, news, Philip, news. Uh, there's uh, not there is, that much news, but there yes. is. There, slow there is new, slow, slow vacation news. Yeah, it's, in Germany it's called the Sommerloch, uh, and there's not a lot happening. But obviously, uh, in autumn, stuff is going to happen. The conference is going to happen on October 10 to 16. Uh, as usual, it's going to be two days of training, three days of talk, and two days of sprint. It's going to be the first in-person conference. Uh, it at least feels like a century, but it just has been two years that we did not do this, and we're really excited to go there. It's going to be in Namur in Belgium. It has a nice uh, yeah. river running through the city. And the location yeah. is La Bourse, uh, the... the um, Stock market uh, is, uh, will be uh, the stock exchange, uh, but it's it's turned into a, a congress uh, venue, and it's a magnificent neo renaissance, whatever that means. I, I watched, I looked at it uh, on Google uh, Google Street View, and it uh -huh. really looked nice. And it's smack in the heart of the city of Nemur. So we are uh, we're like this is the main event that hap happens in Nemur. At least it feels like because this looks like the the main house in, 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 in town. So we're going to rule this town uh, for a week. I uh, hope we're going to make a good impression. And Philip, should... Philip. Yes. I, I, let's add some scope creep. Uh, I mean, yes. we have this, this joke about Plon Conference and, and city names, but now that you're talking about venue, venue locations, I mean, we've had a few, right? We've had this nice, really cool, and then, then speaking for myself, the Netherlands uh, uh, in Arnhem. That was, the, that was the beautiful. The theater beauty was beautiful. I remember going to Bristol with this grand hotel with this creaking wooden f huge floors and, and high ceilings and everything in a creme white uh, Yeah, very, very British. That was very, very very excellent. And you British. remember uh, Brazil? Uh, like uh, in in in, uh, no, in there. Brasilia, there was there's this. It's a crazy town. It looks like an airplane because there's like one. Uh, th these roads go uh, make uh -huh. it look like an airplane. And in the middle of the biggest road, there's a island in the road because the roads are that wide. Like, it's they're wide like rivers. <laughs> you you can't cross them unless there's a pedestrian crossing, and they're like every four to five kilometers there's one. So um, yeah. it's really a, the, the whole town is built for cars and not for people. But nevertheless, in in the middle of that road, there's the huge main congress center, and it's uh, right next to uh, like. Not far from the what's what's it called the the main football stadium in Brazil has a crazy name. Sorry, not remember. a real football fan. Then yeah. <laughs> yeah. What else did we have? Uh, we had a, a Budapest. We had a huge university building with a with was a technical where the Wi-Fi went down every so-called minutes when they turned on a huge university research lab magnet. Uh, but the building was also. Awesome, uh, big, uh, nice. Yeah. That's what one I went Retu to. With a rotunda. And you remember in Washington, wasn't that the Ronald Reagan Conference uh, Center or something? A colleague of mine went to Washington, but I got the picture that was also, yeah, yeah, really. It was a huge thing. Uh, the name uh, um, um, blew me off, but nevertheless. Yeah. Uh, 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 
across the White House, basically. Uh, okay. So yeah, conference venues are always a thing, a nice thing to see, and it, it doesn't matter. I mean, we've had we had also the nicest, coziest ones, but yeah, it's that, this run in in Namur, in Namen, uh, the Dutch variation, because you know, Bel Belgium, Belgium is bilingual, right? So you have to yeah. learn you have to learn French and Dutch uh, if you want to visit. No, no, you don't have to learn it's, anything. And it's it's, but in it's, the it's interesting. Europe. And it's no, a hard no excuse Europe. not going there. And there's planes from from all all, all countries to Belgium uh, from yeah. the US. Yeah. I'm looking at you, you uh, US of A. Um, okay. So, what else is new? What else? Yeah, new? Uh, last last thing. Uh, get a ticket and get it within yeah. the next ten days because uh, there's going to be early bird tickets available yeah. until August 14, and uh, yes. afterwards yes. you're going to have to sell your house to get to that conference. Nah, it's still going to be cheap. Exactly. And if you if you say, look, early bird, who who cares? I I have some of the money. Uh, everything that's uh, 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 everything that's surplus, everything that stays there, that is oh, uh, like after all, everything has been is going to the Plum Foundation. So yeah, don't uh, get the ticket I'm, now. Get it in two weeks and pay the full exactly. Price. And do much a bit better more sponsorship. Yeah, so pick your. Uh, uh, pick, uh, you can you can choose whatever you want. So there are still tickets for after the early bird, and the money uh, will always be wisely spent or uh, stored by the Plone Foundation. Yeah, and consider going by uh, train. I'm going by train. You're going by I mean, train, which is not that hard because I'm. It's. I think it's a. Eight-hour train ride from Munich. So I'm, 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 I fine. must say, I'm, for me, it's it's like one country down in Europe, and and I, I would be much tempted maybe to go by car because then all the wise traveling train. Yeah, I'm I'm, not, I'm undecided. Take but a bike. We'll see. we'll see. We'll see what happens. Yeah, I could even. Yeah, that would be a nice joke. I could even go by bike. So that's the conference. There's the, uh, there will probably be. Uh, can we? guesstimate on being there another sprint in 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 autumn now here we don't know yet i mean we had two really large development sprints that brought us to better one um yeah i mean it's it's plum community if people want to organize uh, something uh, then that's great i mean the, the trans there was a translation sprint for brazilian uh, for for uh, 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 portuguese for brazilian which we just mentioned uh, uh in the in the, i think the last the last episode we mentioned that. So we, who knows? Uh, maybe there's still a sprint coming up uh, uh, also to to help with uh, finalizing Plone. But the biggest yeah, major thing coming up is, of course, the Plone conference, which will also have another uh, sprint at the end. Yeah, that's true. And people are uh, frantically, ha they should frantically be working on the training material uh, to give the trainings. Uh, and that is uh, benefiting yes, Plone yes. as well uh, as documentation. And not to forget, I'm, oh, Philip. Call for papers. Call, uh, call for papers. Call for presentations. Call for yeah. anything you'd like to yeah. present at PlanConf. That's, yeah. uh, that's yeah. open as well. If you have any idea for a talk, uh, if you want to show something, look at previous conferences, look at World Plone Day. I mean, World Plone Day has, I think, silently, secretly become our second uh, and the other half of the year uh, a virtual conference now where also things, a lot of interesting things uh, are uh, have been presented. Are you, um, are you thinking of giving a talk? Yeah, I am, and I was thinking about. I mean, it's our next subject on our on our list for here, but we're running a bit out of time, so I'm really afraid now to touch it. But um, <laughs> I've been been I've been, of course, in our preparation for the podcast, we're pitching subjects uh, to each other, and we have our our format with a feature and news and some add-ons and things. And I've been chatting with Philip uh, already a few times about doing a bit more about marketing and sales. I mean, because we're. Of course, we're both developers, but we're also working for a blown provider, uh, a blown service uh, company. Uh, not the same, uh, of course, different countries, different different clients, uh, different, uh, but some things in marketing and sales have been coming back. I've been doing this now for uh, for a, a long, long time, like over, over uh, 20 years. Uh, where 15 have been in this position uh, with, with a plone provider. And you, you, you try to deliver the best, you build software, you write it, but there's also a, always a sales and a marketing component where you have to, to pitch the system to, to your clients. They have to buy into it and then they have to start developing it and then you're done. And then after three or four years, uh, the client comes back and says, okay, can you do an update? Well, no, that's not what's happening. There's, there's a lot of things that can happen. And I had prepared... Uh, uh, a block now where I would like to discuss with Philip a bit uh, what happens, for example, um, when 
your client or you get an email from a, from a uh, 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 which happens also you get an email from from some some organization using plone and they say yeah um, you're a plone uh, specialist of course uh, look at your website whatever um, and is plone still the good we don't think that plone is still um, the the good the best cms for us uh, in the future and then you get a lot of discussion and things. And, and I must say, now I'm doing the fancy one like like somebody else's client or maybe an organization that started using Plone all on their own uh, uh, comes up with that question to you in your inbox as somebody working and knowing a lot about Plone. And then you start going into the defense and saying, no, but Plone is great, Plone is this, Plone is that. Um, but sometimes it, it, it even happened to one of my own uh, 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 clients where uh, we built a great plon system and it was happily and we thought uh, and everybody lived happily ever after and then after two or three years uh, 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 we got some through some chance uh, 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 email or discussion it was like yeah but we're still looking at another cms because uh, yeah we yeah we plon is nice but we don't have a page builder and uh, we we are missing form support and I was like holding my chair like, what do you mean? We have a page builder. We have multiple page builders. I mean, we did a podcast about where we talked a half an hour about page builders. And then you think, what's going wrong? And one of those things that, that and then you start talking about it. And, and so there's, this is, and you already now, I've been now talking again for, for like three or four minutes. And I've only, this was the introduction of, of many things that are all around about using Plone as an enterprise system. Um, and I really like to add that to the next podcasts uh, with, and I'm still trying to 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 find how to to compartmentalize the the discussion so that Philip uh, and me can only rant rant or talk or discuss about it for ten or fifteen minutes. But it's a huge scope of things that we as de as developers and as a community uh, focused on hands on and delivering uh, a solution uh, quickly lose out of sight that when we have build the system that people start using it and our our goal is that people will use it for many 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 years plone is now there for 21 years philip 22 i, I lose count i sometimes see the it feels like forever it feels like forever but we're, we're uh, way well, that, older that's not bad that's a that's a good thing so because because where's your brochure where uh system or your static site builder that is fancy in 2018 where is it now it's, it's going to be dead in the water it's not going no longer going to be maintained and you still have the zodb and plone running and it's it's not the same and that's the that's that's the perspective of a client who goes to you and buys the website uh, is the wrong perspective uh, at the beginning because it's 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 a it needs to be an ongoing project and a, and a permanent uh, continuous improvement and evaluation and um, maybe we as developers are and and as solution providers are at least me uh, uh, my company we, we're not really good at uh, coming back to clients every half year or every year and evaluating the system with them uh, and the clients are in the same boat because they they think they they bought something and it should work and five years later or three years later they look at uh, where i don't know wordpress or whatever is is now and what they're doing and they feel like Oh, the system we chose is the bad one because it can't keep up with with what sh what uh, glossy uh, glossy uh, product uh, sheets uh, can show us uh, in 2020 when they bought something in 2015 and they decided to not use a page builder which actually was available at that time as well and they yeah. chose not to use that and chose not to use this and uh, constrain their requirements mm -hmm. and only. I don't know, much later, come back with all these feature requests instead of evaluating what uh, what's the usage and what's the purpose of that site or that intranet and what are the editors asking for. And uh, what what I see in, 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 my, in a lot of my projects is that clients spend uh, serious amounts of money for sites, but they uh, once it's there, 
uh, they treat it like uh, like I don't know something uh, something fancy uh, a, a picture that they're hanging on the wall, and there is someone who who brushes it off from time to time uh, to put the take the dust off. But there's not exactly. a project it's, it's owner. A fixed... It's not a painting because he, 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 it it is. I'm having a hard time finding a comparison. Exactly. Because, yeah. Yeah. It, it needs to be worked on constantly, and it has needs to have an owner. And if there is no owner, the project is gonna be. It feels like it's dead in three or two, if yeah. two years yeah. even. So this is this is so this guy this this whole subject matter or this subject scope is something I'd really like to bring in a bit into the podcast as well. Uh, and well, what I just said, this is the end of of, uh, of season one, uh, our first year uh, uh, online together, uh, Philip, almost every month except for the summer. So this is thing, uh, but this is also something I would I would like to 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 try and see if we can get it into a talk uh, by uh, uh, in in October uh, when the conference is there. Because one of those things is that what you said, Philip, what I that kind of sketched now. Plone is is usually configurable with add-ons, and if you if you don't if you didn't need a page builder in 2015, you might need a page builder in 2018, or in 2020. And sometimes it can be even much much smaller with just configuration options. Uh, you, you together with some people in the organization, when you start the site as the what you uh, described as the project, then decisions are made. But and then for some organizations or clients or situations. Those those requirements get like set in stone, and as you said, they get dusted off by uh, after now and then. But there are Plone can can be con you can configure it for many other things, and that's and, and it's not really Plone specific. If you go to any other open source CMS uh, like Drupal or WordPress or others, they work on the on the same basis. And I think we could even if we would start discussing this a bit more in in, in bite sized. Uh, 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 sessions in, in the podcast, uh, those gen generic things are also applicable to, to other CMSs, which are also having modules, also having configuration. And it's, it's a bit silly sometimes that you see organizations needing a website and need, needing CMS functionality. You see them hop from CMS to CMS every three to four to five to whatever the, 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 uh, 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 the, the time is that they can use the system before they run into oh something is too old we miss things and then they start all over again and they look they look at the the, the other garden where the grass is greener they see a list of features and say oh but this CMS has a page builder we need to go to that CMS and then they need to do over everything all the other things that that came with with selecting the CMS uh, uh, which caused a lot of work a lot of frustration. And of course, this is how sales works. I mean, you you pitch your 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 product against their product, uh, where um, where actually on, on open source, it's it's so much more nuanced uh, than than just buying, as you described, Philip, a product, a commercial product, where there's only a, a thousand configuration buttons, and you can't change any source. So of course, open source invites this for for a large part. So that's the introduction. I filled already. I think we filled our, our ten or fifteen minutes extra that we planned for this. Um, but we'll need to. I really want to do this because we, Philip and I have discussed yeah. this o over the year before we, preparing we this. To. We tell each other some war stories and things, but it's always we didn't dare to to touch it in the in the podcast until now. But I think uh, this is a, a sort of small promise to to really try to add that. A, bit as well measured uh, to the uh, to our next season yeah so it's so it has so many layers also how to how do you, how do you turn that into a marketing uh, um, um, text for plone itself that it's old like it has been around the block uh, that is that sounds like something bad but it's it's not because then you you still can mm -hmm. uh, not still. You, you can you can create excellent stuff with it, and you're not going to be left yeah. uh, alone. Yeah. And uh, you have, the company is going to be bought by someone else who owns the CMS, so it's going to be sold, and uh, you're going to be forced to use the cloud-only version, like Atlassian is doing with all their stuff now. And that's, uh, yeah, that's another it, subject. It, yeah. Your data is not going to be held hostage because it's yeah, it is it is real open source with a long-term commitment of a long-term active community obviously and with uh, with people changing coming in and going but the same is happening with the clients that's also a huge topic by the way people 
a new guy comes in with a client and he heard from, hey, this, my nephew told me WordPress is the hot shit. Yeah, that's how, what you have to deal with then. Let's let's yep. leave it at that. Yeah. And uh, let's nice things uh, to look forward to. Yeah, we, I mean, we've got some nice things to look forward to. So we've got uh, uh, in our second season, we are having a blown six final. Uh, we're going to have a conference again, uh, a real cool one. So yeah, lots more to discuss. But first, yeah. Philip, summer. Yeah, so, some 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 add-ons. Uh, some, oh, summer add. Oh, yeah. Sorry, yeah. I'm forgetting ones. Yeah, just yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, our final part. Yeah, we should not, <laughs> not we should not break our promises. Yeah. So the final round of season one add-ons, Philip. What did you find? Yeah, I, f I found plenty, obviously, and uh, the good reason we found plenty is uh, this thing here: awesome plum and awesome Volto. So if yeah. you don't know, awesome, awesome. Uh, Awesome, 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 awesome. If you don't know these, uh, it's the they are the uh, curated, uh, community-approved lists of awesome add-ons for Plone that support the newest version, one for Classic and uh, one for Volto. Um, obviously, sometimes you need pieces from both or something works, uh, has effects in both, uh, in bo both worlds. So um, going through that, I always um, find something that's interesting. Uh, a tiny thing that I found, but uh, since we've been talking about images quite a lot already, uh, let's uh, look at that. Uh, I'm not going to demo that. It's just something to mention is collective auto scaling. We talked about how it's. David um, prevented uh, blobs being created when versioning and Maurits and others prevented uh, blobs created when scales are, uh, when a tag is created and so on. And this is a really nice thing because it, 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 it uh, solves uh, one of the main issues at the root when, because a client decides he wants an image like this and he uploads an image like this. And um, so it, this is a tool that you can uh, inc uh, add and you can configure it uh, and it recalculates the real images, not like only the scales, but the real image. Then the 10 megabyte JPEG uh, that you took with your iPhone is gone and replaced with the maximum scale that you configure it with. And your database is going to be happy bef uh, for that reason. Yeah. And yeah. You don't have to configure your web server to prevent uploads um, only up to, I don't know, five megabytes. Because if your client just wants to upload a 50 megabyte uh, J JPEG. Video or PDF. Yeah. yeah, video is a different thing. Auto scaling doesn't do that. Uh, also, you, no, no. obviously, you need it for these files. Uh, but a 50 megabyte uh, JPEG is going to be uh, scaled, uh, not scaled, it's going to be recalculated and the original image uh, from which the scales yeah. are then created is going to be replaced yeah. with this one. So that's a really nice uh, tiny thing. Yeah. And, what I, what um, I mentioned, Philip, Philip, what yeah. I mentioned is, is if you indeed, if you could say just block any incoming uh, 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 post request larger than five megabytes, but if you do that for scaling images, then you can't download, upload anything larger than five megabytes. And sometimes a yeah. user wants to upload a PDF or something else, and then this this breaks. Same same warning, like the whole image handling stuff. And don't scale any image just down to 400 pixels because if your website has it, it's also used in a header, uh, then you get, of course, problems. If it's you use high DPI, then you also have issues. And if you don't watch it on a mobile phone, but on again a desktop, then the size is so you really have to look beforehand what is the maximum width of an image that can be used in the site. Well, uh, most sites are def if desktop, uh, if your design is, is, is blocked, for example, by 2024 or 1200 thingy, then 2400 uh, uh, pixels is all you need, is all you will ever need in this website for many years to come. So that's where auto scaling really saves you from having 5,000, 8,000, or 9,000 pixels wide images there that, that have no use at all. Excellent. But hog your, but hog your database. Thank you, Laurent, uh, for doing that. Uh, it's a nice, nice thing. Obviously, this the same is true for Volto, it, because the data is stored in the back end and uh, has the same effect on your database if you use Volto. Uh, speaking about Volto, we have a couple. We picked a couple of add-ons to demo. 
Uh, we've been talking about that quite a while, that, oh, there's this multitude of Volto blocks being developed, uh, but we didn't really show them. We showed something from Kit Concept last time, but it, it is mm -hmm. really true. A, a lot of Volto blocks are being released all the time, and we're going to show a couple of them now. So the first one, let's see here. Uh, that's the, uh, the, it's called Volto Twitter block, and I uh, love the fact that it's created by the Brazilian Plone community. So there is a Plone Gov Brr organization on GitHub, and it has released that. Uh, the person who is in responsible, you obviously know him, it's Enrico. And no this is uh, the Volto block in action, in this case, in, in a grid block, because tweets are small and so it's nice to have them and so this is one if you if you create a new one it's just a new block you select uh the tweet block and then you embed the you add the url here and it loads the uh the tweet um including uh in this case uh if it's a rep ah, reply, also responses I, yeah, yeah i, I picked the reply so it loads the original and reply um, and a uh, word of warning, you need to disable your privacy blockers and your Firefox security settings need to be on standard and not on strong. So I talked to Erico yesterday and say, what's this uh, button written piece of code that you created here? <laughs> and he said, hey, what are you using? Uh, yeah, in Chrome, it suddenly yeah. worked because yeah. my security settings were lower there. So uh, this is a word of warning. When you create it, you obviously have to uh, modify your security settings. Yeah. Uh, also, the other way around, you can add it technically and it will work. The functionality will be there, but be aware of GDPR. Uh, if you load yes. Twitter there, uh, you have to ask for consent first because I think loading this Twitter stuff uh, does some, uh, at least some profiling third-party things. Not 100% yes. sure, but check check that uh, it's, it's all... Uh, uh, there are no uh, privacy requirements there. But in you your region. can, there is an advanced setting and you can say ah, do, do the, not oh, track. Oh. So er, excellent. Oh, wow. And you can set it, uh, set the language and you can change the style. I haven't shown this yet. So now we have a black and a white tweet. So black sheep, white sheep. Excellent. Nice, um, nice, nice. Really, so it's using, really it's nice, using the style, beautiful. it's using the style stuff from, from the Twitter, uh, 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 from don't, the Twitter don't thing. I, don't I, ask I me. It just works. I, I didn't read the code because it works. If it didn't I'm an work, I'm I wouldn't an read the code. In this but case, it's cool. I am this is very user. nice. This is yeah, very it's a nice. really useful thing, but uh, probably for most of my clients, I wouldn't be allowed to use it out of the box because of GDPR, obviously. But um, yeah, not everything is Germany government uh, stuff. So another thing, um, okay, let's uh, move to the next one, is going to be uh, Volto social sharing. I'm just going to show a screenshot of that uh, because it needs to be configured. If you're, uh, again, GDPR, uh, social sh sharing, uh, you have the issue legal uh, problems. And this is a GDPR compliant way to, to add social shares, like share this on Facebook, because it does the like, you click and then you have to click again or something like that. Uh, but it doesn't do anything out of the box. You need to configure it um, in, in Volto to, to show the right uh, things. But it's a nice nice little add-on written by Code Syntax. So thanks for that. I, I, that is much appreciated. We had that uh, already uh, quite some years ago with that It was called Sharif or something, which was a module that yes, exactly does yes. this. It doesn't uh, right away when the page is loaded, activate all the Twitter stuff or activate the Facebook stuff or activate the, the link. Uh, the LinkedIn uh, snippets that you get from all those uh, uh, social media platforms right away. But you first, as a user, have to click and then a pop-up comes, do you really want to share this stuff with whatever uh, icon you clicked on from the provider? And then it starts activating the JavaScript. So it's a kind of small sandbox. Yeah, yeah. two thingy. clicks for, for more privacy, something yeah. like that. There was a project there that it was based on. But there's, uh, but there's more. Uh, I already prepared that. So this is um, you. You asked me about the uh, the, the the migration form. Uh, this yeah. is the migration form. So when we we coders create websites, what we want to have running the code uh, the website is code, but we want to what we want to display the website 
is also code. And there is a nice uh, block to uh, allow you to do that, and it's the code block, uh, and it allows you to select the language uh, oh, yeah, that it is yeah. so it has syntax highlighting you can change uh, the theme to dark uh, decide if you want to show line numbers or not uh, obviously I always need to go in dark mode and the block is called uh, hang Volto on code block yeah it's the Volto code block and it is uh, also from see. Clone Golf Brazil exactly and I can Find it under text, I guess. Here, code block. There it is, and I just—it's like yeah. a text block, and I can add some CSS. Uh, I don't know. Uh, let's see if it works. Body um, color pink. Ah, important. Very important. Does, is that valid? Not sure. Let's see. Uh, this needs to be CSS. Save. Yeah, looks good. Yeah, so and now it's perfect. Yeah, yeah. There's Obviously, probably some very nice library behind this that does all the code formatting and then things. Uh, yeah. uh, just like Prettier does that for your in your, in your code uh, development environment, for example, for Python. So yeah, this is really cool to, to if you want to add a doc, if you want to create documentation or an explanation or what anything you need to add some code. I mean, you we always I mean what we used to do in Tiny MC was just select it and say pre pre-formatted and that was the best we could do and of course you could add extra functionality in there but again what you uh, what you started uh, the the, the add-ons with uh, philip these are all now, now blocks components and you can really yeah. mix and match components much much easier and quicker and also extend them later uh, than when you are messing around in tiny mc yeah and it's also really easy to add them so if you have never done that before create a new volto project with the uh, generator uh, that actually, if you use it, you're not getting Volto 16 yet, so you need to update the Volto version in uh, the dependencies to the uh, latest Alpha 21 until the generator is updated. Maybe there's Alpha for the generator yet. But there are two things that you need to do. So there's one uh, setting for add-ons, and you just drop your add-ons here. That's like the organization and uh, in npm so you find them on npm uh and or look at the re installation requirements that you have in the repository that you find on awesome volto uh, so the add-ons thingy and the version pin is in the same files uh file and it's in dependencies so here this one is for example the volto code block and i'm just uh, told it to pick any version uh, the newest one obviously so this is the uh, the second add-on. Um, do we have a third on? Uh, third add-on. Let's see. Where is my browser gone? Here's my browser. <laughs> so there is, uh, yeah, Volto Automatic. Uh, I spoke to uh, Enrico yesterday, and he showed me this uh, Volto uh, Pass Plugins Automatic. If you've ever been to uh, Plone Org and logged in, you you log in in uh, using uh, GitHub. Uh, account and automatic uh, does that and this is the add-on that connects pass plugins automatic i think that's the backend package called uh with volto and if you enable uh, if you install that you get in, when you click on login you have this configurable uh list of uh um, authentication providers obviously you have to configure that I didn't do that because you have to create a key set and stuff on on, on github I didn't go there uh, but it's 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 really not hard to do we are doing it for plone org uh, the plone org relaunch for example and the plone conf org website has the same so when I click on uh, log in here, I get the login with GitHub thing, and I'm logged in. I'm not an admin there, but I, it's using the same uh, stuff like uh, Plone.org does. So that is that's a nice add-on uh, that uses automatic. Um, cool. And yeah, indeed, like you said, uh, it was already there for uh, in, in previous Plone versions with the PASS plugin automatic, which kind of yeah piggybacks on on the very flexible PASS system that we've had in in, in Plone itself in the backend for ages. Uh, and this just ex yeah, I mean not to not to say it's it's not low, but this, this yeah it 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 shows it also now in the uh, as an as an option in the in the Volto front end. Yeah, and we we said earlier you should get your ticket, uh, so click on register now. 
And then there is your uh, Tito uh, shop. And if you're wondering how this is happening, this is also a Volto add-on. It's called the uh, Volto Tito block that uh, creates this uh, the, the shop uh, block. In uh, you can have a shop block. I obviously didn't create one myself because I'm not selling anything at the moment. <laughs> but you can. Uh, that is, it is actually being being used. So if you wanna uh, uh, wanna wanna uh, show tic- uh, sell tickets. Uh, that's it. And the last but not least, um, uh, I, I just talked to Timo today and uh, I talk, we talked about an add-on he did and I uh, said, ah, that's a really nice add-on. Why didn't you add it to the Plon, uh, Plon Awesome list? And it would be so nice to have a Volto integration for that. He said, hey, it already does, works in Volto. And I said, you maybe you should put that in the readme. Okay, uh, this is still uh, to do uh, putting it in the readme, but putting it in awesome clone. Uh, I, I did that just earlier today, and it's uh, it's not it, not here. It's in content. It is called uh, embedded drum roll, page. Drum roll. Embedded collective page. embedded page, and what it does is it it em- allows you to embed any uh, external HTML site. So there is a couple of add-ons that allow you to use uh, mirror content in from cloned folders and stuff, but any external URL uh, that is uh, not yet there, and it's uh, it creates a content type called external content, and. Um, here it is. So this is uh, when I edit uh, that. It's a it's a classic content type, but it comes with a serializer, uh, a deserializer, obviously, and a serializer. Uh, so Volto uses the deserializer to display uh, the data that it returns the deserializer. And I added the Plon Org news item for the Plon Six beta release. And uh, I used the at at content core thingy to remove strip some things uh, away from that. So if you don't know this trick, any page has the content core view that you can call on it. It's publicly available and it allows you to drop everything that is around that. It's nice for embedding pages because we don't want that navigation, for example, in in there. So, um, so yeah, Philip, does I'm it just, actually? Does it actually? St- I mean, this looks like the venerable products windows, and we've had a few of those uh, already, of course, in our in our uh, 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 in our ecosystem for a long time. But this is not just an iframe; it's really downloading uh, the content and then storing it. And is it? Is it? I mean, I may, maybe I'm over asking it's, now. It's doing crazy transforms with images and links and whatnot. Oh and wow! As, as it is with all projects, where you think other. Oh, embedding a page that should be easy just uh, use request library and uh, dump the html and then you get to thinking okay god there is a source uh, links and javascript and css and images and whatnot yeah, and yeah. i actually for the demo i cre- I, I embedded a uh, the, the sharepoint front page from microsoft <laughs> uh, and it works, including um, the search. And navi- the, so the search obviously didn't return any content, but it created all these tiny things that look horrible, obviously, inside a clone site, but it, it worked really f- well. So that was pretty impressive. I'm going to show you how it works if I don't use the content core. Oops, what not? A, what did I do now? Just a bit back. Yeah. Uh, like this. Yeah. And save. Uh, it looks a bit different, so because now you have the navigation, and since the styling of the classic side uh, is not there, you you get stuff here. So mm, it might, it could be, would be nice to actually uh, be able to specify a a CSS ID, for example, uh, that You're to evil. only gra- grab that. Add, add, add feature requests in the podcast. Yes, exactly. Be, but be it, your... it works really nicely. It, it it just works fine. So it's it's great if you have a site that mostly shows content and it's not a full blown huge system. But it, you have, for example, static HTML lying around on your web uh, server on an Apache. Uh, this is the perfect way to include that. And it can even be dynamic because it r- does all this rewriting. So good 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 job, uh, um, Timo, yes. writing that. A uh, terrible job marketing it regarding the uh, not putting it on awesome clone and 
uh, uh, mentioning that it works in Volto. Obviously, uh, this site is running locally, so uh, let's 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 try what happens if I do the same in Classic uh, to drive that point home again. Yeah. So external content also exists here, and this is how it looks yeah. in Classic. It's just a content type. So yeah, very nice. Cool. And remember, can, this is. This is all open source. I mean, if you want to yeah. look at how this works, how this functions, I mean, we've had the same issue, with, like you described, with all the extra resources. It also happens with uh, in any add-on, which we try to develop in the past, when you want to create a PDF, for example, there you also run into these issues. You run into issues with author uh, authentication, but it's all open source. The, the other one you showed with Taito, the Taito block, the Volto Taito block is also perfect. I mean, if you don't use Taito, but you have the demand for another uh, uh, integration with another webshop or whatever, uh, look at the uh, code from the Taito block and see if you can adapt it for another system and, and create another component for that. Yeah. And maybe I make it sound a bit too easy, but it's open source. At least you have a you have a huge starting, you have a huge platform from which to start and from which to, to, to copy and inspect and see how things work. So uh, with this, um, I think we're done. We should we, we should get ready for a summer vacation now. Uh, at least in <laughs> where are my vacation where are my... has just started. Do I have them? No, sorry, not here. No sunglasses. I know, for I know me. in other parts of uh, the of Germany, at least, uh, vacation is already over. But I'm 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 good to go on the beach now. Um, actually, I have to take the train on Monday to Italy. It's going to be a 10, 10 hour train ride. So I'm going to have. I'm yeah. going to take my laptop to do yeah, some but the traveling. The traveling that's what is, I think is, is that's my holiday. The traveling is part of the vacation. I had a short trip uh, uh, at the end of June, and then we always, uh, we don't drive for hours and hours. We just stop in between. We take a small hotel in a, in a nice town somewhere, and we stay, and we go on the next day. So, um, while you're playing there, then it uh, allows me to say uh, uh, goodbye to all our listeners for this season, and we'll hope to see you back in... I think August, uh, no, August is not, of course, so September. And then we'll start with season two. Excellent. Uh, do we, Philip, we'll, uh, do we continue with season two? Yes, yeah. unless, uh, unless we burn out uh, or burn up uh, or, Under the sun. Uh, or melt in the heat in uh, Use, in your, sun's, use yeah, your sunscreen, or, Philip. Yes, we will. Okay. Uh, talk to you soon uh, in September and uh, hope to see you all at the conference. Bye-bye. Um, Thanks for staying with us for the last year. Thank you very much and hope to see you next season, next year and bye. have a nice summer. Bye-bye. <laughs>